Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus, joined by... Lars Isaksson, uh, general, general Manager and Business Director at Dirac Research in uh, Sweden. So, uh, I have tried this out and it all has to do with corrector sound, but you guys have a long history and it all started, what, about 10, 12 years ago? Yeah, the company was actually founded in 2001 by uh, three PhD students at uh, Uppsala University in Sweden. And these guys were quite upset with how bad their speakers at home sounded. So they wanted to do something about that and uh, they created a lot of algorithms and stuff uh, to improve that experience. So. Uh, they took that and uh, created a company, which became Dirac. Okay, so you guys started off, what, 2001, and then what happened? Uh, we started out with uh, approaching the automotive industry, actually. Uh, so our first customers were actually Bentley and Rolls-Royce. So uh, our uh, audio solutions are in all Rolls-Royces and Bentleys now. And from that, we moved on with BMW and, and uh, later also Volvo in Sweden. What is it that you do inside the cars? So we make different measurements. You know how the speakers are set up in a car. Not ideal for anybody really. So what we have done is that we do measurements in the cars that, uh, that, uh, that we then create algorithms of and then, uh, then uh, create the software that we implement into the, uh, <coughs> into the stereo systems of the car. And uh, that really makes uh, the, the audio ex exquisite for that specific car. So all cars are different. There are big cars and small cars and so on. So we try to adjust that to fit the specific cars that we work with. Fantastic. And now you guys have moved and expanded a little bit further. You mm -hmm. guys are going into augmented and virtual reality. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, after the automotive industry uh, <coughs> found out about us and we got a lot of business there, we actually moved from automotive to the mobile industry. So right now we, have, we are actually having audio, uh, direct audio in around 250 million different smartphones in the world, mainly in China. And uh, from then, we have created our AR and VR initiative. Last year at CES, we demonstrated uh, virtualization of speakers in a room. So this year, we actually have our product, uh, the, uh, the direct VR product, in, integrated into uh, an Android smartphone mm -hmm. and also into some uh, Chinese HMDs. Okay, so how come China has jumped on Direc and the Western <laughs> world hasn't? I don't know, for, for us it made kind of sense to approach the Chinese market, uh, especially with VR, because uh, number one, uh, we already had customers there. And also if you take a look at what sells most in, in VR today, it's actually uh, screenless uh, viewers that you put your uh, smartphone in. So it made sense for us to, to start working with Android as a, an operating system. But then uh, I think in China also there are a lot of companies working with uh, uh, HMDs, head-mounted displays, where you have everything integrated into, into the headset. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think, I, mean, I think VR is really growing fast in China and we, we, um, we work also here in the US of course. But I think that uh, yeah, China and US is really the markets that this is taking off now. Okay, so try to explain to me and our viewers that, uh, I mean, if we have an Android Chinese phone and it's got mm. sort of all of your software, how, how does that work? Do they, when they're doing virtual reality? Yeah, so, so we uh, integrate the software into the smartphone and then we take the audio streams from the smartphone and binauralize that into the uh, headphones that the, the, the user is using, basically. What headphones? There's so many different types of headphones that yeah. people might be using. <coughs> Some of our audio technology needs uh, tuning for the specific headset. But that's the good thing about the Rack VR. That works with any headset that you put in the phone. We are approaching the gaming uh, development market as well. So there are a lot of segments that we, that we could be interesting for. Well, when it comes to a virtual space, when I tried it out just now, I, I was watching a trailer of Fast and Furious in a, in a virtual theater space, cinematic theater space, and the whole idea is that if you move your head around, that the sound sort of changes mm -hmm. uh, according to which way you're facing. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, it's true. I mean, that's virtualization, basically. So what we do there is that we, it's like if you have a 7.1 audio system in your home, that's what we're doing, but we're doing it in the headphones. So it's like virtual, virtualization of all those speakers, but in your headphone. You know, if you put on some headphones uh, today and listen to Spotify or whatever, all the sound you hear is in your head. It's in, in the middle of your head. 
what we want to do is to spatialize that to make it sound like you're sitting in front of those seven speakers. Which area do you think in the virtual reality space is the most in, like interesting for direct to work in besides sort of gaming and shows? <coughs> I think that, I mean, if you look at the market reports that are available today, especially from IDC, for instance, I mean, it's clearly so that VR is the technology that is, that is growing fastest. Uh, AR will come, uh, and but it will take some more time. And I mean, if you look at Google and, and the Apple, they, they both have uh, different in, uh, initiatives to drive AR. So that will definitely come. But I think that that's the reason why, why our, our strategy has been to focus on uh, the VR technology first, because that is already there and it's growing. Another great thing about our technology is that it's uh, it, it doesn't really matter if it's the VR or the AR case. I mean, in VR, you want to be totally immersed in, 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 in that specific world. But the difference with AR is that you want to also be able to hear uh, sounds coming from the outside, right? So our technology is not tied to VR or AR. It fits both. How are you expanding further? What are you planning to do for this year? And your roadmap, what is your roadmap? Yeah, so now we are here at CES in, in Vegas and, and uh, demonstrating uh, um, our technology using a Samsung S8 and a Gear VR headset. At Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in, uh, in end of February, we're gonna expand that demo to have moving sounds everywhere in, in the room. And then at CES in June, we're gonna have the full fledged solution out. Yeah, and that means that we, we can have uh, moving sounds uh, anywhere. Uh, so that means also that we can attract any, any VR uh, segment. The most interest we have right now is actually from headphone manufacturers. Of course. Because this is really a competitive market, so they need, really need an edge. So uh, right now we, we are um, in discussions with uh, two different headphone manufacturers that want uh, this virtualization of speakers in their headsets. Have you been speaking to, uh, I don't know, Google or HTC Vive about potentially taking what you have into their headsets? Yeah, I mean, we, we, talk, we, we, uh, we talk to a lot of players in the market and I think it's important to, 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 to talk to, to the bigger play, biggest players in the market because these are the guys that really drive what the others are doing. So, I mean, we, we are in discussions with a lot of uh, bigger companies, yeah. Well, is there a website that we can go to to find out more information? Yeah, that's www.dirac.com. Okay, well, head over to their website if you want to find out more about what they're doing mm -hmm. with audio in virtual and augmented reality. And head over to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more.